Hello world and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video we are going to see how you can set up your continuous deployment, continuous integration pipeline using GitLab for your serverless framework project. If you like to see more content about serverless, cloud computing or other software engineer topics in general, just subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So as I say, in today's video, I want to show you how to set up a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline using GitLab. GitLab is like GitHub, but with a little bit more features. It allows you all this uh, CI CD pipeline for free. Well, you have some limitations, but for your basic projects, you can do it. And I will show you how easy it is to do that. Why you would like to have this automated? I created a video about that. So you can go and check it up in the cart. So I don't have to go over what is continuous integration and continuous deployment and why you should automate it. Also in this video, I will set up a very stupid serverless project, very, very simple with one test. So you can also automate your tests. The idea of this video is not to show you how to do the serverless framework project because that's not the core, it's the configuration of GitLab. If you're wondering why you should write tests or why you should automate your test, I already made a video about that as well, so I won't go into those details. So I leave you in the cards, the video. So as I say, in today's video, we are going to create a very simple serverless project. We are going to create a GitLab uh, repository. If you don't have a GitLab account, I recommend you to go and create one. And then we are going to configure the automated continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline in GitLab using a um, kind of infrastructure as code that it is a YAML file where all the configuration will go. I will go around and explain you the different concept of GitLab when we are building this file. But if you want to know more, I recommend you to go to the GitLab documentation I will leave it in the comments if you want to know more advanced like configuration on GitLab and more advanced ways to do things and how to create more complex pipelines. Just leave them in the comments what you would like to see. I can always create a second episode of this video. So let's go directly to the code and see how everything is done because it's quite an intense coding part today. So let's go to it. So the first thing we are going to do is create a repository where we're going to store our serverless project. It's going to call SLS GitLab CI, but you can call it any name. Then I will not create the serverless project in that directory. I will just initialize a node project. And then I will create another directory inside that directory called service, where I will create the serverless project. So we'll have a node project with a folder and inside there we will have our serverless project. Why? Because it makes easier then to run the test individually and install the different bits and pieces and also deploy the parts we want to deploy, not to deploy the whole uh, node projects. So now we start our serverless project and then we can also create a node package inside there. So the dependencies of this serverless project will get there. Then we open it with Atom and we can see the structure. We have one node project and then we have the serverless project with another node project. So we are going to our serverless YAML and we are going to clean up this file and we are going to make it small changes. The only basic change we are going to do is to add an API gateway so we can test this after it's deployed and change the runtime version of our node to the latest one. So this is something we have done many times, that is just to create an API gateway with the method get and the path hello, just very simple. And now we are going to modify our handler JS to just change the message so we know that this was called and remove some unnecessary things. So this is very, very simple. Now we can initialize our Git project for this repo and we can see that we have the Git repo there. The next thing we are going to do after we initialize the repo is to create the GitLab repository. If you don't have a GitLab account, you should go and create one before doing this step. You can go and add a new blank project with the name. I will use exactly the same name as the project that so is easier to know what is what. It will be a private project in my case. You can make it public or you can do it internal, but just Pick the one you like and then we create the project and you will find instructions on how to upload this project to GitLab. We have an existing folder so we can follow those steps. I already follow the git init and the git add and the git commit so I already have the initial commit. 
so now I need to do git remote add origin and then the git push and now with git push my code will be in the GitLab repository, remote repository. So if I refresh this, I will see that there is the initial commit with the structure that I have in my Atom. Now let's go to our AWS account. If you don't have an AWS account, you should follow this other video on how to create your AWS account that I will link in the cards and also in the description box. And we are going to create a new user. We are going to create a new user called GitLab CI and we are going to give admin rights to make it easy. I have a group and then we are going to get the access key and the secret access key and download a CSV file so you don't lose this information. Then we are going to go back to GitLab and we are going to go to settings inside our repository CI CD and there you will see a lot of information but you need to go to secret variables. So now we are going to configure our AWS account in this repository. So then we can use these secret variables in our deployment of the project. These variables will be secret, so they won't be exposed in code. So there we need to create two variables, one for our access key, and we copy the access key that we get, and other for the access secret, and we also copy it there, and then we save it. We can have the, this in all the environments. So if we have, uh, for example, different production account than different um, than stage, we can select which environments we want to use. But in our case, we will just apply it to all the environments and we save. And now our AWS account is configured. Now we go back to our code and we will create a new file. This YAML file, the GitLab CI file, is where we are going to write our CI pipeline. So if we go to the repo and CI CD, you will see that you have some documentation that you can read on how to configure this file according to your needs. We are going to configure a very simple file that basically will run tests and then deploy. But you can do very complex pipelines with this. So the first thing we need is an image, it's a Docker image. Everything will be run in a Docker image. So it's good to pick a Docker image with the same version of the serverless. And then we are going to define the stages that we want to apply to this. So in this case, we want to test and then we want to deploy. These are the names of the stages. And then before running any script, we want to install serverless in our Docker image. And then we want to install the node package in our Docker image. So we are going to create a new script, a bash script called install. And there, the only thing we are going to do is to install the root node project and then the service root, uh, project. So then if we need to get dependencies or things like that for these projects, they are going to be get when we run the install. You can run more complex things if you need in this install script, but for now that's enough. Then we are going to create a job. The job is called test before deploy and it's going to be run in the stage test. And we are going to run npm test, meaning that this will run all the tests and it will be in the environment dev. So we can have as many environments as we define. Whenever we put an environment dev there, it will create automatically a new environment. So now we need to create a test. So that's the next thing we need to do in order to run the tests. So let's do that. I will create a new folder called tests. And there inside there, I will create a new file. But first I need to create a new module that is the one we are going to test. It's going to be a very simple hello somebody module and then we are going to run tests for that. If you want a little bit more information about writing unit tests, then just let me know in the comment box below, but I won't go into details. We are just calling that module in the handler and now we are going to add the scripts in the package JSON, we are going to use chest our, as our library for test and we have a couple of dependencies that we need to add in the package JSON for this to work. I won't go into the details of this but now we can just install this project and then we can run the test locally and see that they work. Installing takes a while so I will just speed up this for you. After it's installed then we can test and the test runs and it passed and everything is good. So we can go back to our GitLab CI YAML file and write the next job to deploy to the 
test, well, I should put deploy to dev environment. And the stage is deploy, and the script is uh, here we pass uh, to the deploy script the stage and the region. And then the environment is also dev. So we need to create this deploy script that what it will do is just basically deploy to serverless, giving the stage and the region, and it will have a very verbose output. So it will deploy that service project. Now I uh, push all the changes to GitLab and everything you can see in now in the repository, in the remote repository. And then if you go to CI/CD, you will see that the pipeline is running. Sometimes it doesn't start right away because this is free. So you may need to wait a little bit if you are in business hours or there's a lot of people working. But this was done on a Saturday, so nobody was doing it. So my shop started right away. So you can see the two shops. And if you click in the one that is running, you can see that the Docker image is being created and then they're cloning the repository inside it, installing serverless. You can do whatever you want to do in this before script. We are installing the node projects and this should run the tests. So now it's just started with the tests and we will see that the test passed. We have only one. So after this is successful, then it will move on to the next job. And the next job is the one to deploy. So if we go back to our jobs, we can see that that's running. So if we go to the other shop, then we can see that it started already, it's installing serverless, it's doing the installing of the project, and now it's deploying that serverless project into dev in that region. And we can see the verbose creation that we can see that all the stack that is being created with CloudFormation. And after it's done, we will see the service information as we always see. I will speed up the deployment because this takes a while until we see the service information. So all this is happening in the GitLab machines, not in your local machine. And everything will happen automate automatically every time you push to the master branch. So when this is done, we can go and test that URL with Postman to make sure that it works. So that's the amazing thing. You can deploy automatically every time something changes in your remote repository in the master branch or in any branch you want. So if you want to see more complex pipelines, just let me know in the comment box below. I can create some examples and you can see that the deployment passed and the shops are done complete and green. And this will get triggered every, every time you push to master, unless you define it otherwise. You can also create schedules that it will run whenever you want. And you can also see the environments. Now we only have dev, but you can have as many as you define in your YAML file. And those are the shops run on dev. And then you can see in the charts the amount of times that you have run these uh, deployments. That was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or things you would like to see in the future about GitLabs or continuous integration or continuous deployment or automated tests or whatever, just leave them in the comments box below. This video was requested a lot by you, how to build this automated pipeline. So it's coming to you. So don't forget to write your wishes in the comment box below. I read them and I put them to my backlog. If you think this video is worth, share it around and spread the word about FUBAR. And around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click and continue watching. And if not, I see you in the next episode of FUBAR. Ciao!